Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm sitting in my kitchen and I want to show you the status of our fridge. Um, and <laughs> long story short, I think uh, having two small kids and uh, some hoarding tendencies <laughs> leads to this kind of a situation where as you can see, the fridge is stuffed to the gills and it's out of control. Um, the freezer isn't much better. In fact, it's, it's almost kind of worse. So the freezer is chock-a-block full of stuff. And um, actually having a overflowing freezer led to us getting a chest, uh, a garage chest freezer about 10 years ago. And here, actually, I'll walk out to the garage and I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. Um, so in the past, what we did to solve this freezer overflowing problem is we got a garage chest freezer that, again, we are super duper happy with. This has been lasting, you know, 10 years or more. Um, but again, same problem. <laughs> I think it's one of those, uh, those phenomena where people just seem to fill up whatever space you have so this guy is also overflowing so um, so instead of uh, examining my life and deciding what I can throw out <laughs> I think the solution that we've come up with is instead let's go ahead and add a garage refrigerator so we uh, recently on Black Friday got ourselves a uh, extra fridge so this fridge is a you can kind of see here it's a Frigidaire 13.9 cubic foot uh, uh, fridge um, in this brushed steel color so it's really pretty vanilla and pretty plain but the game plan is today I wanted to talk about uh, basically unboxing this fridge and installing it here in the garage so um, if that sounds like fun I guess the first thing we should do is get this thing out of the box all right so I don't think there's anything super special about the box other than uh, you know you can see this thing weighs uh, about 140 pounds so the two delivery people actually just came and hand trucked it down to the house and just dropped it off. Um, although this is kind of nice, I guess they give some instructions on how to get it out of the uh, the packaging. I'm a little disappointed it didn't come in a box. Uh, we were going to use the box and build forts out of it, but I guess it just comes in this wrapping uh, setup where it's protected by plastic and uh, styrofoam. So that's the game plan. Um, let's just go ahead and follow the instructions and get it out of the wrapping. All right, so unboxing this couldn't be easier, as you saw, but I guess uh, there isn't really much that comes with the fridge. Um, I'll show you, yeah, there's pretty much nothing. Um, oh, although I guess, yeah, you've got your Energy Star uh, rating here. This is the Energy Star version of the fridge, so it should be a little bit more cost effective. Um, so let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, 332 kilowatt hours uh, estimated electricity use per year. So let me see. I pay about 11 cents per kilowatt hour. So yeah, this estimate about $40 is about right. I, I think I'm probably going to estimate around $37 uh, in electricity to run this all year. Um, I guess you can also back out. So let's see. This is 332 kilowatt hours. That's 332,000 watt hours every year. There's 8,760 hours in a year. So I guess this comes out to about 38 watts. So the average power consumption of this fridge is about 38 watts. So, well, that's not bad, right? That's like a one or two light bulbs. So that's pretty darn good. Um, what else? Let's see what comes in down below. You open this up, nothing really too much. You got some instructions. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, user's manual. Uh, yeah, nothing too much. I guess I'll show you one other thing that's sort of interesting. Um, down here on the back, there was some tape holding this tray. This is, a, I believe, a little evaporator tray that um, you kind of want to leave in. I, uh, I accidentally pulled it off when I was unboxing it. It just sits and clips into the, uh, the compressor down below. But I believe that's just a tray to catch um, any uh, evaporative, or any condensation that evaporates down there so there we go that's the fridge pretty darn easy so let's go ahead and take a look inside uh, where we're going to place this in the garage all right so one of the first things we got to do is clear out a space for the fridge so I'm thinking of sticking it right here um, I measured it out it should work uh, the only thing that we got to first do is clear out all this junk right so we got skis poles all this other stuff so I'm gonna clear out this area and uh, we'll be back in a second all right, so we've got the space cleared out, and now let me show you one other issue. Um, there's this uh, exhaust vent 
which actually is coming from the dryer right over there. So that exhaust vent is in the way. So I'm gonna have to build a little platform so the fridge can sit basically uh, on the platform and not crush this exhaust vent. Um, also, the other thing to come to, to point out is there's no uh, 120 volt AC outlet anywhere in this vicinity. So again, I'm gonna probably have to run an extension cord uh, underneath this step and then all the way back to here where we do have power. So uh, let's go ahead and do those two things. We'll run the power as well as build the uh, platform that the fridge can sta stand on. Okay, so let's do that and uh, I'll be back in a second. All right, so here's my little platform and as you can see, I've also routed power uh, to the corner, so Next step is, I think we gotta somehow figure out a way to pick this thing up and get it on top of the platform. All right, we'll be back in a second. All right, so here we are. I made a little ramp and used the ramp to shove and push the fridge up on the stand, so this is uh, working all right. The only problem, though, is the door sort of open from the wrong direction right now. You can see here's the door to the main house, and right now you have to kind of come out of the house and then walk all the way around to the front of the fridge and open it from this side. And again, this is not terribly convenient if you want to just kind of pop your head out of the main door and grab something out of the fridge. So what I want to do is actually I'm going to switch the doors so they open from the other direction. Uh, in case you're interested, I made a completely separate other video showing how to switch the, uh, the doors from opening from on the left or on the right or vice versa. So if you are interested, feel free to check out the video. You can get to it by clicking on the card right up here in the upper right of your screen. Um, all right, so uh, let me go ahead and uh, I'll switch the doors and we'll be back in a second. All right, so we've got the door switched. So now it opens from the other side. There we go, that's looking great. Perfect, okay, so uh, let's keep going. So the next thing to do is we need to cure this rock. Look at this, if you move the fridge, it rocks back and forth. Um, so we need to come down here and we will pop off this little plastic cover on this side and take it off on the other side, okay? And there are these little feet that we basically just need to uh, grab a little crescent wrench and we are going to extend the feet. There we go, something like that. And tighten it up. So these feet will brace it and well, I guess I gotta do a little bit more than that, but you get the idea. So give me a second, I will get both of these feet down on the ground and stabilizing the fridge and we'll be back in a second. All right, so let's try that. Now that the feet are on and look at that, that's much better. It's not wiggling anymore, so okay, I guess I'll put these little covers over, uh, put them back on. Okay, and then, I think we're pretty much getting there, so maybe what we can do now is take out some of these, uh, this blue tape and some of these other packaging. All right, there you go, finally. Uh, that was a lot of blue tape, but uh, I, think, I think we're done. All right, so while I was removing some of the blue tape, uh, I noticed this thing. I kind of accidentally bumped this uh, this deli drawer. This is kind of neat. Look at this. It slides to the left and to the right in addition to opening. So that's kind of neat. I guess you can kind of position it where you'd like. But otherwise, you know, I think we got a normal stuff. We got a little fresh storage drawer with a little, <laughs> yeah, that's about the simplest humidity control system you could have. Just open the different number of vents. But again, I think, you know, all of these are adjustable. So I guess we can adjust the shelves to the height we like them to be. Uh, pretty simple. Um, okay, I guess, I, I think it's got, oh, it's got LEDs. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so they're LED bulbs. So I guess gone are the days of hopefully burning out the, uh, the fridge light bulbs. Okay, obviously temperature control here for the fridge. Uh, let's come up here to the freezer. The freezer is nothing awesome, I guess. I guess same thing like this is uh, removable, although this is interesting. The back of the fridge, okay, so these don't have the little tabs that the, that the refrigerator trays do, so that's interesting. You would think they'd be the exact same for the tray from the fridge and the freezer, but apparently they're different. So this back edge just sort of, I guess again, you can position it, but it just kind of rests there. That's kind of funny. 
huh, oh well, so it almost seems like more work to design a different track system for the, t for the fridge and the freezer, but oh well. Um, okay, again, we got temperature control for the, uh, for the freezer. Again, oh, that's, again, that's interesting also. This one, is like, there's like distinct detente for the temperature control for the freezer, but the fridge here has sort of this continuously adjustable um, knob. So again, slight inconsistency, but oh well, this is, uh, again, not the most fancy fridge in the world. Um, I think there's nothing special about the door drawers. Um, yeah, I think, oh, they are, uh, yep, they are removable. So I guess you can take them off, but uh, okay, great. Okay, so there you have it. That's the fridge. I think we've got it pretty much ready to go. Let's uh, let's plug it in. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So I plugged in a kilowatt meter into the outlet that I ran over here because I actually am just curious on what's kind of the, uh, the watt requirements for startup. So ready, let's go three. Uh, let me move this out of the way so you can actually see. Okay, here we go. Plugging it in now. Okay, there we go, plugged. In case we're gonna kick a second to kick on. Aha, there we go. Aha. Okay, so it's cooling down, it's on. So look at this, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I saw 185 watts, I don't know, 200 watts maybe it started. Okay, there goes the compressor. Aha, you can hear it humming. Okay, so it's actually a little bit louder than I thought it would be, but uh, okay, so that's kind of interesting. Even when it's on, you can hear the compressor going, so 60 watts. Okay, so that's pretty good. So again, this is not the average wattage, right? We worked it out from this chart. I think we said earlier it's, you know, 38, 30, 40-ish watts average all year, but definitely not on startup. It might be more interesting to come back uh, once this is stabilized and see what we've got, but let's open this up and see. Hey, look at that. I think we got, I think we got lights. Yep, check it out. LED lights are on. So I think it's cooling down. Let's look up top. Um, okay, so I guess there's no lights up here, but theoretically, I think it's working. Okay, I think we're set to go. So let's go ahead and uh, close it up and give it a couple hours to cool down. All right, so it's all cooled down. And actually, to be honest, we've been using this now for a couple of months and uh, we're very happy with it. As you can see now, it's uh, very easy to uh, fill up, which is, I guess, kind of a good and a bad thing. It's one of those things I think people just kind of expand and fill up whichever space they have available because as you can kind of see, um, <laughs> now I almost have the exact same problem that I used to have in the other fridge. But uh, then again, um, this makes it easy to stockpile your Costco supplies and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it seems to work really well. Um, we're very happy with it. The um, one thing I'll, I'll point out, um, notice these door uh, opener things that are on it. Basically, it's that small piece of plastic that is on the bottom of the door, um, but it has a tendency to open it up kind of violently, especially once you kind of go past 90 degrees. See, look at that. So being next to the garage door, it will actually easily whack into the door. And as you can see, there's this nice uh, finish on the front and I don't want to damage that. So I would recommend if you have a similar situation, I actually put some just cardboard bumpers here on the side of the, uh, the garage door. So that way, when if you do open these things accidentally too hard, they just bump against that, no harm done. And uh, you're, you're off to the races. So anyway, like I said, um, we've been very happy with this second garage fridge. It helps uh, with Costco run and things like that um, and with that being said I think this is probably a good spot to leave it um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if so I also hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel uh, if you just scroll a little ways down on the YouTube page and click on that subscribe button it really does help me continue making these videos and remember the new videos come out every Monday and I hope we'll have a lot more household DIY and other fun projects like this uh, exterior garage fridge uh, coming in the future so with that being said um, I hope I'll catch you one of these future discussions and until then I think I'll sign off talk to you later bye